Hello and welcome back. My name is Huntiner and we are playing the Petty King of Cornwall in our quest to create the Kingdom of Cornwall plus some of Wales, as we call it, the Kingdom of the Channel. When we last left, Dumnarth, his soulmate and wife, had died. And I guess we just continue from there. I guess the first important question is, what are we going to do about this situation? Uh, am I going to remarry? I, I originally had a plan for remarrying for this character if his wife died while he was still alive. And, and it's a good plan, uh, and it fits the character's personality and his family relationships, but... You know, a man can't even grieve without, grieve without being interrupted by the duties of state. What is this? Why am I even being asked about this? This is like some regular magistrate's job. You know, he's arbitrary, and I can't afford to lose the effects of this. I really feel like he was just so pissed when he got asked to deal with this that he is just going to... just going to make the immediate decision to just let her die. Almost through passivity, because of how upset he is. So that plan I said I had was going to be to marry him to the infertile daughter of the Lord of Tintagel, the sister of my brother's ex-wife. Well, I mean ex-wife in that he's dead, so his wife is now <laughs> on her own. She's a woman who, in this time period, would have had a very few prospects except to just live in her father's house the rest of the time. I don't even think he would think of this as being, like, a real marriage. I think he'd think of it more as just bringing some oh my son has become my friend through my pedagogy oh that's that's good he's also got more learning that's also good that'll help out in the future i mean i think it's a good idea i'm not even going to think of her as a wife more as just like a helpmate to look after my kids while i am focused on the matters of state someone close to me someone related to the family i think it's a good idea and it means I'm never going to have to really worry about an actual wife ever again. The single biggest effect of this is that it has ended my alliance with, uh, with Northern Wales. Um, that actually kind of weakens my position quite a bit. Something I'm going to really have to think about as well. I mean, I am pissed about the, the death of my, uh, my wife, and I am 100% certain it has to be someone in her family. It's not going to be somebody random. There's nobody in my court who actively disliked her. Not yet. Not yet. Find out if you can. If there are any secrets in here worth discovering. Though, to be fair, <laughs> the Baron of Tentagel is not explicitly very good at his job, so... Yeah. Hopefully we can uncover if somebody up there is responsible for it. I just got a feeling that they are, though. I don't know how, who else would do it. I don't know who else would have any interest in my my Welsh wife otherwise. Uh, maybe someone in the court dis dislikes her. Though really, there's nobody, there's nobody who would be upset with her in the court. The court is pretty... They pretty much like me, and I saw no evidence that they didn't like her, so... I think uh, marrying my baron's infertile daughter is a good compromise, although I am well aware of the fact that infertile doesn't mean no children, and if I, despite of the fact that I'm chaste and she's barren, there may be more kids. All right, now that uh, Gerferdin has finished its control exercise, uh, David is the next target. Hopefully con getting control over our South Wales domains will make our situation a little bit more stable a little bit better is definitely next let's just do that let's uh ask for gold from our head of faith all right so some money from our head of faith that we will probably be investing in buildings uh i think that we're going to invest in devon first since it's our primary domain there's lots of things we could build there i think i need to build once I can, I think I need to build the trade port here. Still some gold left to gain before I can do that, so we'll hold it for now. 
And with everything else that's going on, there's still the big question to answer. Am I going to integrate Prince Howell? Am I going to take his title, or am I going to remove him from the map altogether? Inevitably, I think everybody watching should be aware of the fact that, although this is a difficult moral question from Dem for, for Demarth, uh, and eventually Morgonog will be part of our domain, as will Gwent. The question is just how and why and what the best compromise is. That's... Oh, uh, nothing, nothing. I'm gonna try twice, because we always like to try twice. The likelihood that we find anything, and even if there is a secret there, is so small because he's so bad. That's actually an interesting point, though. Now that I'm married to his daughter, and Rebellion is almost completely out of the question, I could put somebody in the job who can actually do it. Yeah, I know he's gonna hate it, but you know what? We will also... ...sway him to convince him that leaving him in the job was a mistake because he was never good at it and never interested in it. Because he wasn't, and we only put him there because he's our vassal, but really, we need somebody in that position who can actually do the work. And now that I'm married to his daughter, he's not going to rebel anyway. He secured his daughter in the position of queen, and that should be enough for him. And uh, I hope that I can sway him over time that it is enough for him, and he stops being pissed, because I've needed a good spy master for a long, long time. Uh, having somebody with a decent skill in there will make me feel much more comfortable that the outcome of these uh, circle spins are actually valid and not just him screwing up. I might have her spin the circle twice herself in case her score being low at the beginning makes it not as effective this time, I don't know. Or I'll just give up the idea that it's there. I mean, I am pretty convinced that it was somebody in here that did it. I don't know who else it could possibly be. So... Oh, uh, this place is... up in arms. <laughs> This is why it sucks to have Northern Barbarians as your neighbors. They just, they just can't stop rebelling. There's chaos in the, in the lands to the north. Jarl Ragnar is having to get rid, having to deal with a whole bunch of uh, rebellion now that his father has died. Try one more time. I know I said it would stop after one, but I got to give her a full circle so that her skill is being effective in the entire time, I I guess. You know, give her a chance to prove herself. Yeah, I'm utterly convinced someone in here, but I don't know if we'll ever discover who it is. I mean, I probably should check the territories of the brothers individually. That might be more sensible. Yeah. So just a moment of RP talk here. It being someone in her family is much more interesting, but it being someone in my court makes it much more easy for me to get revenge. So I... I don't know. I, I hope it's somebody in her family, because I think that's the more interesting story. That's all I'm really saying. The King of Brittany, King Solomon the Terrible, has died, and his son, King Rowalan of Brittany, has taken his place. I have no positive or negative feelings about him at all. He is definitely weaker than his father, which means that I will probably be holding on to the title of house head for a while, which is good because I never really trusted those southerners to make good decisions about it. I'm getting a little bit paranoid, which makes sense after my wife just died because I am now accusing my bishop for being problematic because he didn't show up on time to a meeting. I'm going to respect his privacy because I don't really believe that he's plotting against me. He's been a good servant for a long time. Of course, the fact that the present tr uh, event didn't immediately trigger makes me feel like maybe he is plotting against me. Now I am becoming a little bit paranoid. Ah, uh, what's happening? There it is. My belief that she was murdered by one of her brothers has proven to be 100% accurate. All right. Declare war on his father immediately. 
for the mm, key. Who's he allied to? The king of Lotharingia. My allies aren't as strong as his allies are. How strong is the king of Lotharingia? The king of Lotharingia is 3,000 strong. My allies are not strong enough for me to win this war. That's... That's actually really, really, really bad for me. I... I need to think of a way to handle this situation that... That... Solves my problem with his son. But his father's protection is making that impossible. I think we're gonna have to go on a... On a different tact here for a second, I think we're gonna have to consider some social methods of undermining him. I think we're gonna begin with hooks and secrets. We're just gonna expose this right away. Just make sure his father knows that he's protecting his daughter's murderer. We are not keeping this to ourselves. That That's the first thing that's going to happen. Problem is, I just do not think Dumnarth is a murderer. Let's look at his father here. We can see all of his power comes from this alliance. There's just so little I can do if I'm not willing to run a murder plot on him while he's under the protection of his father's duchy title. Um, he's, he's literally out of my reach. Even if I went to war with his father for the claims that I currently have, that would just take territory away from him. It wouldn't actually open his son up to an attack on me. I would have to get a claim on the entire duchy, at which point I would be able to imprison the murderous bastard, which is probably the correct method of trying to solve this from Dunmarth's perspective. I could hire mercenaries. If I hire mercenaries, that might bring it more into my favor. That's oh, just so difficult. This is just not the kind of treachery that has an easy solution. Uh, I'm not a murderer. I want justice to be served, but having justice served means justice, not me killing people. That would, in many ways, by many arguments, make me as bad as him. I think we wait till the old man dies. I think we wait till the old man dies. There's plenty of time for me to gain the power I require to take that duchy over and put his son into my prison. But there is something that I have to do something about, something that I've been thinking about for a long time, something that I've been going back and forth on. I think this is correct. We're not going to take his land from him, we're going to take the title away. Once we have the title, he can keep the land. I think that's valid. I think that's the compromise we're looking for. We're not going to take the actual land he rules away from him. We need somebody in that land anyway to rule over it. Instead, we're going to take the duchy title from him and put his territory under our uh, stewardship because I just think that that's... I think that's what we would perceive as the correct answer. As for my allies, who are we going to call in? I think, if anything, the lesson we learned from our brother's tragic death is that we need to make sure that we have the men we need when we are going to war. Because of that, I think we're going to bring in the Count of Rowen if he will do it. But I think he's enough. We don't need to go overboard. Seems my son feels like handing out some alms to the poor. Definitely generous, because I'm also generous, so it's a trait that I appreciate. Excellent. So, my son's future father-in-law has been summoned to help us with this war. The man who, not too long ago, rewarded me my prize brooch. I hope that he lands and tries to break the siege instead of joining me in the northern siege. I think that's 
the right decision. Yeah, he's landing far enough off that he should... Oh no, he's not going to do it. I think he's going to make the mistake of joining me, so let's see if we can... Where is it? Split off besiegers. And then come this way and see if he will follow me when I move around to try to stop the siege, because stopping the siege is my actual main goal. I do hope that he follows me. I do hope he comes with me. I hope he decides to come with me. Come on. No, don't do that. Please. You know, even though I'm generous, uh, I don't think this is worth it. I don't think he needs the extra money. I think it'll be just fine if we, uh, if we just let this go. It's an embezzler. That's not really an important secret. We're going to finish this siege before he finishes his siege. Though I highly doubt we're going to be able to go down there and stop him, which, which sucks. Oh well, that was expected. Brittany has restored its full power. I mean, I was hoping to hold it for longer, but uh, that'll happen in time. Uh, we're gonna have to back off because he's gonna come after us as soon as he finishes his siege in Exeter. I really wish my allies had done something about this. No, I wish they would pause. So we have got it. Looks like we caught his heir, our veil, which will end the siege before it finishes. That was pretty lucky. That was pretty lucky, you know, but we'll take it. Okay, so now that this is finally done, we need to try to clean this all up with the least amount of tension between us because inevitably we do want him to be our ally. We want him to be our friend. I'll ransom her for a little bit of gold, disband all, immediately go to him and begin the process of swaying him that this is better for both of us. They can keep the lands that he's had with me just being in charge of the title. I think this is better for both of us. I don't want his lands anyway, not the direct control over them. I want the indirect control over them that comes from being in charge of the Herberth. Let's see what he's good at. Are you good at anything, dude? Oh, you're a great spy master. You know, I am going to do what could possibly be the historically stupidest thing ever. I'm gonna actually make him my spy master in spite of the fact he freaking hates me. And then I'm going to hope that I can convince him that this was good for him before he... Before he does something insane. Such as murdering my entire family tree until his title returns to him. I'm honestly not sure how much of a problem I have with him being an insularist. Yeah, I'm not going to try to get him to convert. I could send him a gift. That would be a big gift, but it would put him into the... Into the positive. So he is terrified of me, yeah. <laughs> That's not unexpected. That's the compromise. He can keep his territory, but I get the title. Welcome to the petty kingdom of Cornwall, Lord Howell. Now, I really can't find anything else that will allow me to continue to ignore the injustice happening up here in Northern Wales. I do find myself wondering if a lightning war here could work. I need to be a little bit patient. I need everything to come together. I need to either gather enough piety or find some other way to get a claim in his domain. And I need stronger forces. It's still, it's still waiting. It's still gotta wait. I don't think so. I don't think we're gonna do that. I think we're gonna go to Devon and we're gonna build ourselves. Now, the original plan was for a trade port, but all of my men at arms are archers. Kind of like this. Now, the original plan was for a trade port, but all of my men-at-arms are archers. But I think trade port is correct. I think we'll put the second defensive structure in that will make our archers stronger once we have uh, another building slot unlocked. And the Norse up here are just having troubles. They are just in troubled times. So we did it. We, uh, we pulled the trigger. It was probably always destined that we would. Our distant relative here is now under our control. I'm gonna actually take him and put him on 
disrupt schemes. I know that he hates me, but I also know there's... that he is too terrified of me to directly oppose me. That he might indirectly oppose me, which could be very destructive. So we're going to have to invest time, as I said, in convincing him to change his mind, to accept that this is just better. Thank you, new wife, for the stewardship experience. We now have centralization, something we've been looking forward to for a long time. That should help this little circle here ever circle a little bit faster and a little bit faster. You know? Always a little faster. And yeah, I think that's, uh, that's gonna be it for now. We have... Oh, Culture Clash. No. I'm not gonna be promoting culture there ever anyway, so... They can keep their traditions. I'm perfectly happy with them keeping their traditions. That's okay with me. I probably won't even be removing them from these places anytime soon. I still don't know what to do about this guy. We're going to do that to that guy, as a start. Since we have a good, well-developed uh, relationship with our uh, our Pope, I think we're going to get him excommunicated for the murder of my wife, whom I actually did love, which makes it feel like this isn't enough, but I'm not a murderer, so... You know, realistically speaking, my expectation is that his father would do something about this. If his father refuses to do something about this, I'll do something about it when he's dead. Alright, so this kid, this kid is the kid who is betrothed to Sidwell, my daughter, I think. He is related somehow to the King of Brittany, I'm pretty sure. Uh, not directly, like, he, he was a vassal under the King of Brittany. Actually, yeah, the King of Brittany was, in fact, his father. Oh, no, the second King of Brittany, the guy who I was trying to sway, can't even remember his name right now, is his father. So, yeah, I'm not doing this. This is a civil war between two brothers, and I did not, I did not agree to this when we made our alliance. I thought that we would be working with Poters of, uh, of Brittany, not against them in their own war. In fact, I'm not even going to remain neutral. I am going to side with his brother, the rightful king of Brittany, because it's in my best interest to do so. I'm eventually going to want him to support me in wars through our family Kai's, which means uh, no betrothal between him and Sidwell anymore. Yes. Ryalan. I am supporting you indirectly by not joining your brother in your civil war and breaking our betrothal, making our alliance officially dead. I hopefully you will appreciate it. Um... There's not really much I can do to improve your opinion right now because Lord Howell is a higher priority, but we'll think about that again in the future once our uh, internal stability amongst our vassals is more secure. Okay, so our... I'm just looking here for things that... Oh, he would actually give me a claim on Brittany after I just said that I wasn't interested in that right now. No, I don't think so. There is this Leon claim, and I was originally going to take this and give it to my nephew. He has an ally that's nearly as strong as me. I'm not doing that. That's not good. All right. Anyway, I think that's going to be the end of this episode. This rascally kid down here decided to rebel against who I have to assume is his brother. Uh, and asked me to join because he was married to my daughter, and we broke that betrothal and said no. It, it did cost us some of our prestige, but I don't know what else to say. I'm not... No, I'm not... This is effectively a family dispute, and I'm not making a decision between the different parts of my my dynasty. That's... That's not happening. I don't... I don't prefer either the young boy or the old man over each other. You know, that's a marriage that I might reconsider in the future. 
if, depending on how this turns out and what he does afterwards, but right now that's not happening. We've taken full control over uh, De Habarth here, except for the area that's in control of our former ally. I do want to take this territory, but I can't really validate a war with the old man when it was his son who did the wrongdoing. And I'm not a murderer, so I'm not going to murder him. So we're going to have to see how it goes. When he dies, we might go after the son. Until then, though, we're not. I've taken Lord Howell and I have made him my spy master in spite of the fact I can't trust him at all. Hopefully, I will continue to be able to persuade him that he it is for the best that his lands be controlled by me because he will never be able to control them or consolidate them himself and that he's safer under the future power of the kingdom of the channel i thank you all for watching and i hope to see you the next time we are here in cornwall with our slow rp ck3 playthrough until then goodbye for now